The biggest question dawning on any given generation is, am I successful? My question is, how does one gauge and measure what success is? And as for someone who is looking to spread the faith of Jesus Christ, I wanted to find an answer that blended the two. Meaning, is my measurement of success the same as God's measurement of success? And it's tough to answer because everyone has their own opinion on success and its secrets to get there, wherever there is. The answer to that question for me is, I want to fulfill the highest, truest expression of myself as a human being. People ask me all the time, what is the secret to success? And I always tell them what the short version is, you got to have a 22 inch biceps. <laughs> and you got to be able to kill predators with your bare hands. And of course, you got to have this charming Austrian accent. That is a, that's a given. You only live once. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances professionally. See, if you clicked on this video, you're probably like me. You have goals and dreams and you want to make it happen or quote unquote, be successful. Maybe for you, success is the big homes with the fancy cars and the big bank account and leaving the biggest legacy to the next generation. Maybe it's the ability to give back to the people who got you to where you are now. I don't know. But when I really pondered on this question years ago for myself, I asked myself, am I on the path to be successful? Here's the thing. God doesn't want you to be successful. He only wants you to be saved. And you see, that can be confusing to many Christians out there because we follow motivational speakers, success gurus, and they say you need money, you need wealth, you need to achieve life on your terms to be successful. We even see other pastors and doctrines preach, well, God wants you to be wealthy. It's a sign of a blessed servant. And to give back to his kingdom with that money you make. See, God created money. Why wouldn't he want you to have it? Hey, God did create all the materials of the world. Why wouldn't he want you to own it? So it begs to ask the question, does God want me to be successful financially or not? Well, with that being said, God was very specific in what he had planned for the world. He said you would return back to the dust you came from. This is the same God that did say this world will end and a new heaven and new earth will come. And the scariest of all for me, especially if we're speaking monetary success, is that God did say it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. And as someone who filled this narrative in my head for years for what I was being told, I finally asked the big question, does money need to be part of success? Well, if that were the case, then almost every great man in the Bible would be deemed unsuccessful. Many were poor missionaries traveling from town to town. They didn't have money, they didn't have a name or fame, and they definitely weren't doing life on their terms. They were doing it on God's terms. But I think we can agree they were successful. Now, I'm not saying money isn't important. It does pay my rent, my electric bill, my gas bill, my Wi-Fi. <laughs> Thank God for Wi-Fi. And most importantly, food. But God has a different lens for success. See, when I look at the goals I wrote down for this year, I imagine myself achieving all of them. And while I did try for all of them, some I did and will achieve, and others I won't. Not because I didn't want to achieve them and then deem it a successful year, but because God had different plans for me. So if you're still watching this video, I want you to ask yourself these three questions and review these three points when you're looking at what you want success to look like in your life. Number one, remember God's goal ultimately is to save you, not for you to be successful. So if you want to be successful in God's eyes, follow the plan of salvation we find in Acts 2.38. If you haven't, get baptized in that wonderful name of Jesus in water, receive His Holy Spirit, and follow the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Point number two. To be successful in God's eyes, you have to do His will. What plans does He have for you? If you don't know, I'd recommend turning to prayer. It's hard to know the next play if you don't talk to the coach. That's what prayer is, finding the next step and then doing it. And the final point for success in God's eyes is for him to get the glory. See, the rich and the famous and those who quote unquote have it all, they live in their own glory. 
And yes, they seldomly say, I first want to thank God for this talent, this money, this achievement, blah, blah, blah. But let's be honest, they're the one receiving the glory and none of it is really going to God. So yeah, don't do that. So when it's all said and done, you have to ask yourself, would you rather be successful on your terms or God's terms? I don't know about you, but I've made up in my mind and I've decided that you can have the world, just give me Jesus. Well, thanks for watching. I really hope you rethink a few things and really reflect on this message when you're thinking about what success is and how you want to be successful in your life. Most importantly, reshare this video with some friends, especially if they don't know the good news of Jesus. Well, my name is Brother Mario. God bless you all.